Hello, everyone. Welcome to BC 3030, week three lecture covering chapter 10, which is the urinary system. And let me back up just a little bit. I wanted to assure. Um, one of the things that you guys can do every week is go online and download your diagrams to help you visualize the areas that you will be coding for this week. For instance, if you want to um, clarify where the ureters are and approximation to the bladder, it's good to have a diagram in front of you. There are a few in the chapter um, that are helpful to look at, but it's also good to print some out to have, you know, with you when you're doing your, your coding. Okay, so chapter 10, the urinary system, focuses on um, coding for services known as um, renal disease or renal failure. And chronic renal failure is also known as kidney failure. So renals and kidneys are the same thing. Um, chronic renal insufficiency is another term. Chronic kidney disease. And it is a progressive condition, which means that it worsens until um, there is uh, usually a transplant um, would have to take place. And then um, if that does not happen, then the person goes into acute renal failure. Chronic disease leads to acute failure. And it is a sudden, and it says reversible loss of kidney function. I believe it's irreversible because um, the kidneys cannot function. The patient will need to go on dialysis. Okay, so kidney disease basically is the glomerular, and I hate saying this word, glomerular filtration rate determines the stage. The word is glomerular, and it is associated with the glomerulus. Um, if you guys didn't know this already, the glomerulus and the nephrons linked together creates the power source for the kidneys, and that actually um, helps the filtration rate. So stage one is when the kidney is damaged or normal uh, GFR, and then stage two is mild, stage three is moderate, stage four is severe, and then after stage four, the patient goes into end-stage renal disease where there is no recovery without a transplant. So some of the other diseases that are common, which are considered comorbidities, are diabetes and hypertension. And these can um, cause the kidneys to go bad and um, vice versa. So going into the treatment for this service is dialysis. And this slide talks about how we do the reporting for it. Dialysis is done for ESRD, also known as end-stage renal disease. As you can see, you have your code range for that sitting here. And it is um, physician outpatient services, and it can be done uh, inpatient. But for the one-month service or hemodialysis month-to-month, -month, here's your different codes associated with that. If it is less than one month, there are some codes associated with that. And if it is home dialysis, which is peritoneal through the stomach, this is um, the code range associated with that. So the reason this slide is telling us this is that when we do code those examples this week, we have to pay attention to the time frame. The time frame of the dialysis services determines our actual code. So for e and services done on the same day as the dialysis procedure, there is a code in the medicine section that is associated with dialysis e and m For inpatient, we use the 90935 through 90940, and this is used to report end-stage renal disease services. For outpatient, we use the 90951 
and 90970. And then this is also used for non and stage renal disease patients. Some patients um, have some kidney problems that may require brief dialysis services. And um, we do not use a modifier 26 in any of these services, even though we know that when we're dealing with um, provider services um, on a facility basis, we usually use the modifier 26 to determine um, or to explain the professional component of the service. But um, the physician is the only one who can do these services, so there's nothing that the facility would be charging for except the room and the machine. So here's some definitive treatments for the end-stage renal disease. A monthly dialysis or daily, it depends on when, um, how uh, severe the patient's kidneys have failed and patients may have to get dialysis uh, once a week, twice a week. Um, but ultimately, since it's a progressive disease, the patient will need kidney transplant. And then it says arterial and venous access may be surgically developed um, so that a patient uh, is usually getting blood drawn a lot and uh, the dialysis machine will have to connect to a venial artery in order to filter the blood or cleanse the blood um, since the kidneys are no longer working. And then what they do is they will set up a port, um, an access point, or a shunt that always stays in place so that the patient do not have to continually get hopes, especially if they're getting dialysis twice a week or sometimes a few times a day. So here are some miscellaneous dialysis procedures. We have the physician evaluation for peritoneal dialysis on an inpatient or a hemofiltration, which is also a similar type of service that's um, dialysis, but it's not complete. And then you have patient training. So um, this is just letting you know that there are some miscellaneous services associated with this. And this is showing us um, kidney calculus. So another word for calculus is stone, and um, we may see the word calculus or stone or both, but they basically have the same meaning, and um, they can do an x-ray, a CT, ultrasound to diagnose the stones if they are present, and then the treatment is surgical removal. They can open the person up or they can do it endoscopically. Or they have the extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy, which is ESRL. And the patient just sits in a, a pool of water. And um, the ultrasound will break up the stone while they're in there. And hopefully they can pass it naturally. So moving on, we have destruction. The codes are divided based on the extent whether it is simple or extensive. Exten extensive destruction can be by any method. A destruction can be done by cryotherapy, laser, um, cauterization, basically destroying the tissue. And if destruction is done, then there is definitely no biopsy for that service. So we will not be coding for that because the tissue has been destroyed. Okay, so biopsies. Biopsies can be done in any portion of the body. Of course, you guys are seeing that now. And um, they have, we have here some information about the male genitalia. It says excision of penile plaque and removal of foreign bodies. So that is an example of that. So now we're going into um, the male side of the reproductive system. And so we also have a circumcision, which is also an excision, but as you can see, the word circum in front of it, circular, 
basically removing the um, foreskin from around or a portion of the foreskin from around the penis. The circumcisions can be done um, based on a method, whether there is a clamp or a surgical excision done. And um, there is also a code associated for if the patient is a newborn or not a newborn. That's why you see a couple of different codes listed here. Okay, so prostate procedures. Um, we have some different approaches. They have the, we have the perineal, we have the retropubic, and we have the suprapubic, pubic. Super pubic. <laughs> Hard to say some of these words. And then you have uh, the retropubic retro approach is made in the lower abdomen behind the pubic arch. So usually um, there is a cut or an incision made there. The perineal approach is made in the skin between the scrotum and the anus, same place that the woman's perineum is when they cut that little area. Um, to help with giving birth. And then we have the transurethral, which is through the urethra. And if you remember how the diagram looked in the very beginning, you'll see where the urethra was and not the urethra. It's a different, uh, different part. And then you have extent. Um, the extent is subtotal or radical. Radical is removing um, not only that particular um, portion of the organ that they're, what they're referring to, but also um, connecting structures. So it's, um, it's like getting rid of everything. And then you have staged. And I'm not sure if you guys remember, but you have um, staged procedures. Use modifier 58. And this is when the procedures are done in stages, multiple stages. And sometimes that has to happen in order to um, complete the procedure. So we have prostate procedures. Uh, um, moving on, we have a lot of different types. Um, the method of treatment could be a needle. And I have here percutaneous, which is another word, through the skin. A punch, like a punch biopsy. And then, of course, incisions and excisions. And that's the conclusion. That concludes our um, lecture for the urinary system. So I would like to thank you guys for watching. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to make a starfish appointment with me to go over something or send me an email. I'm usually available for the starfish appointments Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday um, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. But if you need for me to um, call you, you know, outside of that time, like on a Tuesday or whatever, or even a Saturday, just let me know, and I will try to do my best. Okay? Thank you. Have a great week.